This is Ramya. I have around 10 years of experience in IT and all my experience is into quality analysis, QA. And I'm very happy to share my experience with you today regarding, regarding why automation? What is the real necessity of automation in Agile, right? So let's see that. Yeah. Okay. So today in 2021, most of us, most of us, right? We speak about agile automation. You have to complete automation of everything. You have to automate everything. And we're also hearing something called as there is no more job opportunities for manual testers, right? As an argument, there are certain other people who, who will say manual testing is always mandatory. Not everything can be automated. But friends, this is a harsh reality. If there are 20 jobs for automation engineers, there will be one job for a manual engineer or a manual tester. Just one job, friends. So can I survive in IT industry without automation being a tester? Uh, the, if, if at all your years of experience is somewhere in between, you know, if you're a fresher to up to 10 years of experience, then it is difficult, friends. It is really difficult. And again, it depends on the company and everything. There are so many factors. But then if you want to take your career to the next level, if you want to really have that career success and grow higher up the ladder, then you have to make sure that you provide value. You have those skills which the industry demands. Okay. So automation is a must in 2021 if you are a tester. Okay. But then let's see why. Why is that so? Okay. So let us understand the complete testing package as on 2021. So the testing package, I call it as a testing package because nowadays people require everything, right? Everything. So what is that? Front end. So recruiters want to call you or HR from the company want to call you and they'll ask you, do you have any experience in automating web applications, automating uh, mobile applications, right? The front end, right? And then back end, right? What is that? APIs. Uh, like for example, a database also, for example, right? It's a backend server, right? How do you talk to backend in the form of APIs? So people are going to ask you, do you have experience in backend automation? And then contract testing. Friends, this is something which you might have heard or you might have not heard. I'll talk about this uh, in some time, but it's just a matter of time. You will hear about this in most of the job requirements today and in most of the projects that you're already working on in your uh, current uh, projects, right? Contract testing, code repository, Git, GitHub, right? CI, CD, it can be Jenkins or Azure or whatever. Docker, people nowadays are asking you, hey, are you an automation engineer? That means you should know Docker also, right? And the first time I heard this, you know, I was thinking like, am I really a test engineer? Because Docker hearing, I'm, I'm hearing for the first time, and then CICD, I thought all these things will be taken care by deployment engineers, right? Uh, way back around five, six years back, this is what my thought process was, friends. So we will get uh, user stories, we have to test it manually and we have to write code in order to make it, what? Make it work by automation. I never knew, okay, fine, a tester is also expected to do CICD, he's expected to know about uh, you know code repositories, is expected to know about dockers, but this is the fact, friends. People want, I mean, you have to be the best. There is a lot of competition today. If I tell, I know only manual testing, as I told you, I just have one in 20 is what? One divided by 20, it's 0 0.05, right? So just 0.05% of the chances we have to get a job, to even become eligible to get an interview. If I say, I know automation testing on this front end, then the chances increase. If I say I know on back end also, then a little more chance. If I say that I know CI, CD also, very, very good chance. Almost, almost you'll get 10 out of 10 jobs, right? At least you will get scheduled for interviews. If I say I know Docker also, high class, right? So BDD, people are going to ask nowadays, have you worked on any BDD framework, for example, Cucumber? Let's see why BDD is really required later and Agile, they're going to ask you about Agile, right? So we already covered a detailed session on Agile, right? What are the 
you know what are the uh, meetings that we have in agile why do we have such meetings all those things you can refer to that video and domain right people are going to ask uh, do you have the domain knowledge so is domain knowledge really necessary for a tester we'll see that in the later slides and of course manual testing right uh manual testing uh this plan functional testing types and techniques test data defect management life cycle test closure activities what are the artifacts right so this <clears throat> so this is the testing package friends you have to know everything in 2021 at least at least most of the things in order to make sure that you really succeed as an automation engineer of course there is one more thing which i have left which is that non functional testing but at least people are not forcing and i know that uh, there are still requirements where you see if you are uh, knowing both functional and non functional then it's great Uh, but then the combination is rare so it's okay if you don't know non functional also it's okay okay uh, like performance testing or security testing because that itself is a very big ocean right if you go into all these things you cannot get into all these things there are two different things right so it's okay if you say that you don't have knowledge also uh, experience in non performance i mean non functional testing but at least all these things whatever you are saying in the current slide it is a must for you to succeed as an automation engineer so let us see one by one okay so front end what do you mean by front end friends front end friends front end is nothing but whatever the user sees your application to enter some data to read some data to click on some buttons to submit a form whatever it is right that is the front end so what people are going to ask you right which language are you using to automate the front end is a java is a javascript or python or c sharp and there are so many languages right and what tool are you using right if it is java usually most of them will be using selenium and uh, if it is javascript most of them will be using protractor or test cafe cypress uh, you know which is uh, being used nowadays very widely uh, and framework development right and uh, let's say that you are an automation engineer of just one or two years of experience then people might not expect uh you to know about the framework development but the moment you say that you are at least uh at least 4 years of experience in automation then people expect you to do framework development from scratch so what is that what kind of design pattern you use you know page object model design pattern is very famous where we keep the locators separate we create pages for individual uh, pages of an application right we write the locators we write the classes we export the classes that's a page object model that's a completely different topic and of course loggers have to go as part of framework reports telling whether which test case is passed which test case is failed all those things and then uh, rest api right so um, integration testing also you might have heard right for example let's say that in our application there is a table and the table has some information um as a manual tester okay provide these inputs and see whether you are getting some output okay you got some output in the table then it's pass but the question is how are you going to make sure that whatever data is that is rendered rendered in the table is exactly the one that is configured in the backend right for example let's say for an application there are 50 users i i want to see the list of all users for this application right uh, those 50 users are there in the database okay But now when i click on uh, generate users or view users button in the front end application let's say so i get a list of 50 users how am i going to make sure it is the same users that is configured in the back end also what if i'm getting a different data what if i'm getting a wrong data junk data right so that is integration testing right so in such cases we have to make sure that we call apis from our uh you know cypress or whatever uh test cafe whatever tool you are using you need to call your apis and you have to take the responses and you have to check whatever you are writing your ui that web table and whatever you have got from your web response you need to assert it and check whether the data is same if the data is same then yes whatever we have configured in the back end the same is displayed in the front end otherwise it's a problem it's a very big issue friends right so that is why there is necessity to call rest apis 
you know, from a UI framework as well. And then of course, test data, how do you manage the test data, right? Like JSON or do you manage in a separate Excel sheet, whatever. And then utils, there are certain common functionalities, right, for any application. Um, and let's say that um, login is a common functionality, logout is a common functionality. So like that, whatever is the common functionalities in the application, you need not write it in a specific module, right? Don't repeat the same functions. If, if you think something is common for the entire application, irrespective of the module, keep it in something called as utils, right? And of course, um, uh, there is something called as interface, abstract classes, inheritance, okay? So let's say that there is something called as a vehicle, vehicle class. And let's say that I'm a very novice person when it comes to coding. So I have to uh, put the logic for uh, launching a car. So what is a car model? Uh, when it will be launched? What is its color? Uh, what are its properties? Like it has four wheels, whatever is the properties of a car, okay? I write a function. I'm sorry, I write a class. I'll call it a method. I basically I write a logic, whatever. Then tomorrow, uh, let's say that there is a bus. So again, it is the same uh, logic I'm going to write, but with different data maybe. Uh, maybe bus has eight, uh, so six or eight wheels, and the color of the bus, or the model of the bus, all these things are going to vary. But the logic, right, uh, that is almost remaining the same. And day after tomorrow, I'll get one more thing called as, let's say, uh, some other vehicle, right, a two-wheeler, for example. So, and then tempo traveler, all these things. Can you see, I'm just repeating it. What if I've created a base class, and I've declared all these things and I'm going to inherit that. Wow, what if I've uh, written an interface? What if I've written an abstract class, right? So these are OOPS concepts. So you have to be very good in such things as well when you're developing a framework, right? So these are your expectations when somebody asks you, uh, do you know front-end automation, okay? Then let's see what is back-end automation. Back-end automation, of course, it's all about APIs, right? Uh, so manually, if you want to check any API, uh, we use a uh, tool called as Postman. So what is the base URI and then what are the endpoints, what are the resources, what are the query parameters, what are the path parameters, and what kind of response should we get, what kind of status codes should we get, right? What kind of authorization techniques that we need to use, or 2.0 is becoming famous nowadays, right? So all these things. And of course, if you want to automate all these things, uh, in Java, there is something called as REST Assured. <coughs> in JavaScript, uh, in Cypress, there is something called as Intercepts. So I used Chai HTTP uh, for uh, Test Cafe, right? So this is how we automate, friends. Backend automation, when you say, uh, you can individually automate only APIs, or you can call your APIs from your UI framework, check the responses for integration tests and all these things, right? All these things are very important. Next, I told you that I'll explain about contract testing. Friends, there was uh, contract testing is what? I told you, UI will talk to backend. Your front end is going to talk to backend. How? In the via API. So application programming interface is the one which helps, uh, you know, for different servers to talk to each other. Your front end will talk to backend. Your client is going to talk to the server via API. Fine. But what if a backend server has to talk to another backend server? Friends, in olden days, there was something called as monolithic architecture. Monolithic architecture is nothing but your application layer will be there, then your business layer will be there, and then your database layer will be there. Everything packaged into a single unit. That's called as monolithic architecture. Uh, let's take an e-commerce application, right? Because most of us will understand e-commerce because most of us would have used Amazon, Flipkart, eBay, or whatever. Let's say that uh, I'll go to amazon.com and I'll search for a product, okay? Okay, not as a user. Let's say as a developer, there was something, okay? I did something, I fixed something, but I messed up, okay? Something else got, I mean, because of that fix, maybe let's say that whatever, whatever reason, the database is down now. Data, the entire database is down. Because I messed up in the products module, and now nobody can check out, nobody can add to card, nobody can see what product exists, nobody can log in. Can you see? Can you see what is happening? Just because of one module, because a developer 
messed up one module the entire application is down why because database is down the entire application is down nobody can work on any aspects of the application so this was a very big drawback so people thought what is that we can do if there is some mess in the products module let the products module go down why should orders or checkout or add to cart or uh, whatever right login why all these things should be affected can we separate these things that is how micro services was born so i have a separate service for products i have a separate service for login log out i have a separate service for add to cart i have a separate service for checkout can you see now now this is what it is this is what i was talking about right can you see on the left hand side user interface is nothing but your application and then your business logic and then your database if something goes wrong the entire database goes wrong the entire application goes wrong the right side is a solution for that which is nothing but microservices architecture where your user interface is not connected to only one service multiple services in monolithic architecture all services are combined into a single thing whereas in microservices everything is separated out and each service has its own database let's say that something went wrong in products module only the product module that part and that that database will go down user can still add to cart user can i mean if at all i mean you he can still go and check out he can still log in so that's a great thing right now this alone can be fixed this alone can be fixed in some time so user experience we are not affecting so this is called as micro services but then now can you see the products let's say the products database uh, because there is integration right for example now i go to a product page and i'll add to cart that has one service now i'll check out that has another service now add to cart service has to talk to check out service to tell hey there are some items that are already added now this user is checking out please provide the form where you can show the address um, whatever is a credit card or debit card however they need to pay show all those options right they need to talk to each other and this is not ui this is back end talking to another back end that is why i have shown here on the left side api handshaking with another api add to cart service is talking to check out service as a user i will not know all these things i'm just checking out that's all i ordered uh, added to cart now i'm checking out but as a developer as a front end developer back end developer they would have done this right so as a tester it is our responsibility to make sure that these two micro services are working with each other properly this is called as of course again that is rest apis right this is called as contract testing friends nothing contract testing is nothing but micro services testing one service okay one back end service is calling another back end service and they have a contract see these are the end points these are the parameters that you need to give these are the query parameters this is the optional parameters this is the path parameters this are mandatory parameters and uh, do we have any kind of authorization things whatever is the contract everything put together is one contract and who is going to give the contract consumer and provider two things are there provider does not know what consumer wants only consumer knows what consumer wants so he is going to prepare a contract see i require all these things please give me that is why it is called as consumer driven contract okay and the famous there is a tool pact p a c t this is a tool which is used in the market for micro services testing this is really very important and you are going to hear about this down the line so please learn this you know put it in your upskill uh, list upskilling to do list right contract testing Na next we know this git repository and ci cd right friends have we ever thought why git why git okay i know that there has to be a central repository where i put my code my colleague also puts his code and then we need to merge it all these things technically are fine but why git right so if i have my code let's say i have a file one one two three four five lines okay now another developer pulled what is pulled he pulled that code he got that code which is there in the central repository in git 
into his local system and and he added file 2 and he wrote some lines of code but in my local system i don't have file 2 what if i keep on writing keep on writing it's as good as two separate applications right no we are working on same applications just two different developers so it is mandatory for every developer and test automation engineer to make sure that every person's code i mean developer's code are merged together so let's say that he did unit testing and his things are working fine the moment he integrated his code with another person's code integration test is shifty right so integration testing is a problem so why is it because it's very important to make sure all developers code and for automation engineers all automation engineers code are working well with each other without any issues that is one thing let's say that we had they had that uh, version 1 code and they messed up version 2 and we would have made changes in lots of lines okay lots of lines so nobody on earth remembers okay in this file in this line i made this change no what if we have already merged to master now oh my god i this is version 2 i want version 1 where is version 1 gone so whatever we had started right from the scratch of the application of the project everything is gone so to make sure we have a mechanism to roll back to the previous version of the code git is required right so git is very important friends now why ci cd why ci cd whenever uh, um, a few of my juniors ask me ramya why ci cd why doctor why so many things It, it, it would have been better that I would have been a developer only, white tester, right? Right. So friends, that question is normal for most of us. Okay, at least for some of us. Okay. So why CI/CD? Let me tell you in a very layman's language. Why CI/CD? Okay. What is CI/CD? People say continuous integration, continuous deployment. Okay, fine. What is that? And why do we require that? Right. Uh, so let's say developer pushes his code into the Git repository. Okay. Now Git. should tell to the third party agents like jenkins or uh, azure or aws or google cloud platform whoever right whoever uh, will do ci cd uh, git has to inform them see somebody has pushed a code now have a new code now build should happen but before build should happen how can we just say whether this code whatever they have pushed is correct or wrong right that is why unit tests and integration tests are mandatory for any uh, for all the new code whatever is a new code that is pushed into the git repository unit testing and integration tests must run it is mandatory write this down it is mandatory to run unit tests and integration tests for all the new code the moment unit tests and integration tests pass then only these third party tools like jenkins or azure or aws or google cloud platform they are going to trigger build commands remember you are not going to trigger build commands what are build commands like we do mvn clean install all those things for uh, this one right it's a build tool maven so that's a separate thing so basically you have to ask what are the build commands from developers okay so now what i was telling is uh, yes you have to run i mean all these have to be automated running unit tests and integration tests is mandatory against the new code if it is pass if it is broke reject the new build tell to the developer this cannot be accepted because unit and integration testing itself is fake okay fine now if unit testing and integration tests pass then only a new build will be triggered what is a build build is nothing but uh, giving a var file or a jar file whatever it is right var file which contains the entire code that's all so that build will be triggered and you will be getting that var file this is continuous integration okay the moment you get that var file that has to be deployed we cannot go and deploy directly on the production unless we test it right uh, so that build has to be deployed in the staging environment you know in some companies they call it staging environment in some companies they call it as qa environment whatever it is on the staging environment you have to deploy who not you even that has to be automated and that is called as continuous deployment okay what is continuous integration when a developer pushes a new code into git repository git is going to inform 
the third party tools like Jenkins or whatever Azure, see there is a new code. Now run unit tests and integration tests against the new code. That process should be automated. The moment everything is passed, build commands should be triggered. Your developer should give you build commands. The moment build commands are triggered, a new build is generated, which is nothing but a var file for web applications. This is spontaneous integration. The moment a var file is generated, that has to be deployed to the staging environment or pre-prod environment, wherever you want to test. That is called as continuous deployment. The moment it is getting deployed, you have to run smoke testing and sanity testing to make sure the critical aspects of the applications are working as expected. If there is some problem, I mean, problem in sanity, reject the build, telling the critical aspect of, of the application itself is gone wrong. For example, add to cart, it only is not happening. Please, what will you do with that application when customer cannot even add to cart and check out? Let's say check out itself is not happening. Right? At the end of the day, it's business, right? It's money. What if checkout is not working? Waste, right? What will you do with this beautiful UI? Nothing. Everything is waste. So make sure smoke and sanity also passes. Then only the new build has to be accepted for testing. For testing your new user stories, if the build has to be accepted, this is the process. This is called as continuous integration and continuous deployment. Okay, friends? Simple. Next. When QA should accept the build, I have already answered this. Criteria for QA to accept the build is unit test should be passed, integration test should be passed, smoke and sanity test should be passed. Then only you want to accept the build, otherwise still straight away, no, okay? Next, we'll talk about Docker. Why QA should know this, first question. Why Docker, what is Docker? Do we know what is Docker, friends? What is Docker, 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 right? Friends, Docker is used for parallel testing. Parallel testing. Okay, if you're working in Selenium, there is something called a Selenium grid, which are used for parallel testing, right? So Selenium grid uses nodes. Nodes are nothing but virtual machines, right? What is a virtual machine? Uh, you have one central machine and you're connecting different machines. So virtual machine is nothing but a physical, it's a physical machine. It is having its own IP address and all those things. Okay, so let's say that uh, there are 100 test cases and uh, you want to deploy to a virtual machine. I mean, you want to run in, in a virtual machine. That means you need to give its RAM, let's say your host operating system, right? Uh, the original operating system is called as a host operating system, which is connected to different virtual machines. And if you, if at all you want to run in every virtual machine, these 100, case, 100 test cases, let's say 33, 33, 34, that means you should allocate memory for them. Basically, you should give all the resources that is required for those test cases to be run in those virtual machines. This is Selenium grid, just you know, on a high level I told. What is Docker? Let's say that I don't have so much of money to invest in so much of physical, I mean, physical machines, right? In the same machine, can I do everything? In the same machine, can I still achieve parallel testing? Why parallel testing? Because execution speed will be very fast. Instead of, okay, 100 test cases is not a problem, but there are 1,000 test cases, so many test cases, right? As and when the application grows. Instead of running all the 1,000 test cases and give it 15 hours or 20 hours, can I run 1,000 test cases in five different systems, like 200 test cases on each system and make the result fast? Can I complete the execution fast because Agile is all about speed, quality, and what? Confidence, right? So definitely parallel testing is a must. And Docker will help you for, to do parallel testing in the same system. You don't have any physical devices. They will create virtual operating system over your original operating system, which is nothing but a host operating system. Okay, so those virtual operating systems are called as containers. Now you have to deploy, which, which means you have to put the code, what software you want, what test cases and what browsers you want, what are all the dependencies for you to run a test case. You have to put it in one thing. And that one thing is called as an image. That image you have to deploy into a container, which is nothing but a virtual operating system. Now container has uh, this, uh, okay, knowledge. Okay, fine, this image you have to run. Can you see friends? Let's say there are five containers, but I'm using only one container. Instead of distributing 3 GB, 3 GB, 3 GB of RAM on different virtual machines, I can just give it to one container, something like that, okay? This is what Docker is all about. 
parallel testing and cost is very less and efficiency is more so that is why people are asking for docker okay now bdd now the next question people are have you worked on bdd what is bdd behavior driven development right one of the famous tool that we use is cucumber right i'm just joking cucumber right behavior driven development but why is this even required in the first place already we have to know ci cd we should know docker this does not this headache is not enough should we know bdd also right if you are getting this question i'll answer you why let's say that i am a um project manager okay let's say i am a project manager and then uh, you know agile we have to release we are about to release but regression testing has not yet happened and there are very few resources very less time few resources and you know not everything can be automated even though parallel testing all those things can be done with docker there are certain things which you have to execute manually the very few resources are there now what to do how to do me being a project manager can i help you in triggering some automation test can i understand what your automation test is doing and can i say whether it is fail or passed but as a project manager i might not know or as, as a product owner or as a scrum master whoever it is right i might not know the details the moment i look at the code it's greek and latin for most of the non technical people right i'm sorry i'm not saying project manager is a non technical people person what i'm trying to say is for all the not like business analysts right there are not technical people they don't understand the code of course on a high level they can understand what is what but deep inside they might not know what is a function call from where to where the control is going but if you have written the code you would have known that right but now they are there they have to help you in regression testing but how on earth are going to help you when they can't understand the code but what if that code is like english they can understand english right okay see here when this happens and do all these actions right then you do this right that is what is there in cucumber gherkin language or jetkin language whatever however you pronounce so there is a feature file which has an english language right when you uh, go to this website and you do this then this should happen right they can understand that and now when they click on that particular thing english language they will go to the corresponding step definition where they will be having the exact code of what the step will be doing and that's how they will execute now let's say that something is wrong they can easily inform you this is not working because it's english like language so bdd is just like a wrapper around your code which helps even non technical people to understand your code where they can dive in and see what is your test case all about and they can help in regression testing or whenever we require them right so this is bdd so agile 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 so as i keep on repeating agile is all about speed confidence and quality now many projects today right even just 5 years back people were not maybe 5 years is very less at least 6 7 years 8 years back people were not more concentrated on agile now people will ask how do you do estimation so there are different estimation techniques all those things agile tell me uh, what are the meetings that we ran why do we require such meetings see agile 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 why there was a waterfall right uh, way back uh, when i was working in infosys in 2011 and 12 it was waterfall so why do we require waterfall i'm sorry why agile replace waterfall that's the first question so if you have worked in waterfall or if you have knowledge on waterfall you should be knowing this friends waterfall is what requirement sdlc life cycle requirement analysis will come first only after everything is done in the requirement analysis if it it has to get freezed which means the moment you go to the design phase no more requirement change should happen only after the previous phase is freezed then it's completed only if it is freezed no more changes are accepted then only it will go to the next phase after design then only it will go to the development phase uh, so testers um, cannot test until the development is complete and freezed right then only they'll go to testing but let's say while they are doing testing they got to know there are requirement gaps they got to know this requirement is a conflict to another requirement because as a tester we think about positive and negative scenarios as a developer they'll be just concentrating on the code 
most of this, right? So now people will get in the, okay, fine. Because of the conflicts and requirements, we need to change the requirement itself. But we can't do that. We've already spent quite a substantial amount of time by the time, you know, uh, it comes to testing, the project application comes to testing. So it was a waste of time. We used to take months or sometimes even years to release the product to customer. Now we don't have so much of time and patience. There is so much of competition and we want quick solutions. So that is why Agile came into picture, right? In two weeks, I'll give you a workable, shippable product. I'll give you a working piece of the product in two weeks, every two weeks. That shippable product, which we can provide every two weeks to the customer is called as an increment. If somebody asks you what is an increment, increment in Agile is nothing but that working piece of the software that is a potential shippable product. Why do I say potential? Because usually we don't ship every two weeks, right? The customer, we do it once in three months or six months, depending on the project. But it, it is a potential candidate. If so, if customer asks you, no, no, I want this right now, we can still ship it because it's a work, working piece of a software. Every two weeks, that is what we're going to do it. And that is called as an increment, right? Can you see that is why Agile came into picture? Now, the question is, when should you accept to work on a user story? So product owner is going to come and tell you, see here, dear tester, dear developer, this is a user story, start working. Do you think you can start working friends? No, there are certain criterias which we have to follow only if it accepts, right? Fulfills certain rules then only we can take it for development and testing. Otherwise, we should not take that user story. What is that? It should fulfill all the criteria mentioned in definition of ready. What is definition of ready? A developer should be able to gather the following information from a story. When I say developer, the development team, which means both developers and testers. In Agile, there is nothing called as developers or testers, okay? Everybody are called developers, friends. Everybody are called as development team. QA automatically becomes a part of development team, okay? So from that perception is what they have to. From a user story, if the development team has to decide, okay, fine, I can start working on this user story, then the below rules has to be met. Otherwise, straight away tell to the product owner, this is not clear. We are not going to start working on this. What are those rules? Let's see. Acceptance criteria is defined. Business value is defined. We have to know, you have to understand, okay, what is this user story? What is its purpose? What it is trying to do in our application? Where will this user story fits? Okay. And how it affects the existing uh, functionalities? Is the story point estimated? I mean, what are story points? How many hours do you require for this user story to get completed, uh, put together by both developer and tester? How much time do you require? If you don't know what is that user story, do you think you can say, okay, this user story, mm, I'll take one week, I'll take two weeks. No, you have to tell precisely, I require three hours. I require two days. I require three days. Don't know, whatever is the number of days, depending on the complexity of the user story, depending on how many uh, places you need to change the code for this user story to work, right? Depending on the business value, you have to prioritize, you have to do estimation. So you should have a story point for every user story. And then there has to be a common understanding in the team, right? What is that? What is this user story? Developer understands in some way, tester understands in some way, that's a problem. Because um, basically I take, uh, I make sure that every stakeholder of the application should have a same understanding for requirement. People cannot understand it in different terms and develop something and you test something. No, again, it's a waste of time, right? So a common understanding has to be there. Only when these things are there, then only you can accept the user story for testing, uh, development and testing, okay? This is called as definition of ready. And when do you say a user story can go as part of increment? We already discussed what is increment, right? So only when a user story meets the criteria of definition of done, it becomes a potential candidate to go as part of increment. So what is definition of none? If I have to say, okay, this user story can become, can go as part of release, then all these criteria should be met. Non-functional requirements are met. So 
um it depends right i'm not telling that this is hard and fast rule this is how it has to be there it depends from project to project if your project is not much bothered or if your team is not much bothered about non functional requirements and there is a separate team for non functional testing then you need not talk about non functional if your team is also responsible for non functional testing then this can be there okay code review should be accepted documentation written and updated see and then there is no much documentation required but at least that user story right uh, you need to make sure that's very clear concise you know conflicts all those things and automated test returns and passing friends manual test passing you see here in agile uh, for example when somebody asks when you have to do automation testing for this user story in the same sprint same sprint that user story comes for testing do functional testing write automation this pass both manual testing and automation testing and it should go as part of the increment this is an ideal scenario but there are so many challenges here i tell you what and of course there should be no known bugs okay then minor bugs and trivial bugs are fine but like which is not having so much of priority okay but if there is so much of priority high priority and uh, like critical or blocker or major then you cannot make that user story to go as part of the increment okay and then it has to be accepted by the product owner on stage or alpha like after continuous deployment what happens Uh, automatically the sanity test cases should be passed on that environment and uh, looking at the report the product owner can see okay fine this this becomes a potential candidate this user story to go as part of the increment right and design review is completed and deployment to uh, production and changes are merged to master branch right so basically all these these are the rules where you say this user story becomes a potential candidate to go as part of release right increment next because when somebody asks you what is definition of ready and definition of done you should know all these things friends and i hope you now understand why all these things are important right now do you see a major challenge for qa friends of course there will be challenges for developers because we are now concentrating only on qa let us talk about the major challenge for qa did you see in the definition of done automation test should be written and passed in the same sprint friends are asked you something fine the user story came acceptance criteria everything is met so you will start testing it there will be bugs right there will be bugs right so that means you need to now do retesting so if there is a bug do you think it becomes a candidate to automate definitely not let's say there are uh, let's take one user stories and let's say there are five bugs in the user story right in that five bugs of course that user story has 10 test cases let's take 10 test cases for one user story and there are five bugs and each bug is connected to each test case let's say so out of 10 test cases five test cases are failing because there are bugs and the remaining five test cases are passing now the question is okay ramya then we can automate those test cases which have passed provided they are independent from the bug what if there is some kind of intersection right this is a bug right uh, for me to pass this test case this step should also be passed but then there is a bug now this test case is blocked you cannot pass it right that is how we mark test cases as blocked which is not having direct dependency right now if it is have independent that test case is not at all related to that but then maybe you can automate it right now the question is retesting takes time developer takes time to fix the bugs and then you have to retest it uh, i'll talk about what is partial regression uh, right later but now do you think in this two weeks time you write uh, you do functional testing and there will be bugs you retest developer takes time to fix the bugs and then you need to retest and then you still have time to do automation testing friends Tell me very honestly, in the two weeks of time, ninety um, percent. I don't know if ninety percent is too high. At least sixty to seventy to eighty percent. The answer is no, and that is why nowadays in most of the projects, if functional testing has been completed in sprint twenty, just a number, in sprint twenty, if functional testing is completed, then in sprint twenty one, we are going to automate those test cases. 
not in the same sprint because of this challenge. Time is a very big challenge and number of bugs, retesting, all those things, right? So, and upon this, upon the challenge of time, there is one more challenge, technical challenge. Does framework exist? If framework is already existing, okay, fine. You have to go and write the scripts. What if framework itself does not exist? You have to write framework from scratch and you require time for that. And that is why they say there is separate automation engineers in projects, separate uh, manual testing in project, I mean, manual testers in project. If that is the case, okay. But what if you are the only person who has to do manual testing also, automation testing also? Then it impacts, right? What if it's a new technology? What if it's a new language? What if it's new to you? Then you need time to understand that. What if it's a new tool? What if CI, CD you have to learn or it's not in place, you need to do all this setup? What if dockerization instructions are not properly documented? Can you see, friends? That's not so easy. We can easily say, okay, fine. Uh, push the code, write some code, develop, uh, push it to GitHub, do I CI, CD, do parallel tests. Wow, fine. Automation testing is done. No, friends, it's not that easy, actually, right? We all know it. So this is a major challenge, friends. So now you can ask me. What if functional testing is completed, developer took time to fix the bugs, <coughs> excuse me, and then I retested it also, and it is passing, but automation tests are not written. Can I mark it complete? Or automation tests are written, but not executed because there were bugs. Can I mark it complete? Can you see here, definition of done? Automation tests written and passing. We have not passed it which means this user story has to be pushed to the next sprint. And it, you cannot mark it complete. I mean, you cannot mark it done, okay? Fine, now, but then why automation testing? Well, friends, we have already answered this. CI, CD is the answer. We do not have so much of luxury in Agile where for every new build, I run sanity test cases. I'll take 15, 20 minutes, see critical aspects of the applications are working as um, as expected or not. No, friends, we don't have so much of time. You have to automate everything. There's no luxury of time. Sanity should pass, unit integration sanity should pass, right? So let me give you a scenario. Of course, you, you would have experienced this, right? Let's say module one was working. It's a sprint one. We have two modules to test, let's say module one and module two. Module one was working, no bugs, but module two had a bug. Okay, so as a tester, I raised a bug for module two. Now, fix is provided for module two. Okay, now module two is working, but module one is broken. Have you faced this anytime? Of course, you would have, most of us would have, right? Module one was working before the fix, but module two was not working. After the fix, module two is working, but module one is broken. But what do we do as tester? Okay, fine. The bug is for module two. Now module two is working, pass. Module one, we would have already marked it pass because it was working for the fix. Now what happens? If we don't catch this in regression, it becomes production bug. Manager is going to come and ask, why did you miss this? Did you not test properly? Right? We face this, right? So friends, what if it was automated? What if it was automated? Like this, yeah, some time it'll take, but still in minutes, hey, no, module to the fix that you provided is working, but the other test cases belonging to the other module is failing. See here, straight away we can show to the developer, right? That is why automation is mandatory in Agile friends. Next, the same thing I told, what if we had automated? module one is broken, the probability is very high to show to the developer, we need not wait till regression. We don't have so much of time to do everything in regression. Okay, uh, let it automation, let it be automation or manual. So it is very important. So it is very important for you to ask impact analysis for the developer each and every time. This also whatever I told, right, you need to have automation test cases in place so that you will know uh, that there is a broke I mean, model one got broke. But there are so many automation test cases, right? How will you know which automation test case to run? If it is a small number of test cases, fine. If that itself is huge, again, we can't run everything. That is why as a tester, it is your responsibility to ask for impact analysis from the developer. What is impact analysis? 
because of that bug that we had raised for module two, only developer knows in which file, in which line, or in a couple of files, he is going to modify some code or add some code or remove some code in order to provide fix. And as tester, we don't know what is a fix. Only he knows or she knows. So now, because you made all these changes, dear developer, what all places in the application has got affected? What all places? For example, there was some issue in the products module in e-commerce application. Should add to cart feature also be tested? Should product description feature should be tested? Hmm? Should search functionality uh, for searching a product, even that functionality should be tested? Because all these things are related, right? So developer is the best person to answer you, friends. So it is very important for you to ask what is the impact analysis? The partial regression testing is a must for every retesting to make sure the one which was working is not broken, right? And if there are automation tests for, for, tests for that, very good, right? Next. Same thing, right? Regression testing. Do we have sufficient time to test the entire application manually? Usually we say if it's a three months release, let's say we have six sprints, right? Two weeks every sprint means two sprints in a month, three months, two threes are, we have six sprints. Usually we keep the last sprint only for regression testing, right? Do we? Do you think you have time friends to do the regression testing of the entire application manually? No way. We have to have automation. In spite of having automation and doing parallel testing, and there's still lack of time because we can't automate everything. We still need to do uh, manual testing. So it is a must. Hence automation testing is mandatory in Agile where speed, quality and are the factors for success, right? So I hope it is very clear to your friends why automation testing, why, uh, you know, industry is asking QA automation, QA automation, 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 new tool, new technology, Docker, CI, CD, why everything, why GitHub, why do you understand how everything makes sense, right? So this is what uh, the testing package. Do you remember this slide, friends? Front end, back end, contract testing, code repository, CI, CD, Docker, BDD, Agile, domain, manual testing. So we have discussed till Agile, okay? I hope things are very clear to you. Why do you require what, right? Now let's talk about domain. Do you think is domain knowledge a must for QA? This is one more famous question that many people have, right? Is it really mandatory for a QA to have domain knowledge? Of course, it's good to have, but is it mandatory? It all depends on the domain friends. For example, I was working in 2011 to 2015. Uh, I was working in telecom domain. Okay, 4G, 3G, 4G, long-term evolution and all those things, right? So that is all about, like, for example, I have a mobile phone, right? Okay, I have a mobile phone. The moment I make a call to somebody, where and all it has to go. So there is something called as attached procedure, tracking area update procedure. What if I am uh, on my car, in my car and I'm calling? I'll be moving from one area to another area. There is something called as handover procedure. Can you see? The person who does not know all these things cannot test just because he's a tester. No, he can't. Domain knowledge is mandatory in case of telecommunication. I have worked in uh, supply chain management domain also, okay? Uh, it's all about logistics, where is the inventory, order creations, how are you going to manage the users, how are you going to manage the materials, how are you going to manage the stores. It is okay for you to get the domain knowledge on the run. While working in a project, it is still okay if you don't have any supply chain management knowledge also. It, as a QA, it is still okay for you to get in the project, start working on your things and get to know about the domain, it is still okay. But whereas for telecom, you it is a must for you to have knowledge. Otherwise, you might not even be uh, shortlisted for interview, right? So it all depends on the domain, right? Next, testing expertise. Just because automation, automation, automation is having a lot of things, does that mean uh, I know how, how to write a code so I'm a good tester? No. If there is no basics of testing, if you are not a tester by heart, uh, to do well, then automation does not matter much, friends. Automation is not just coding, right? You should be well versed with STLC, test planning. What is test plan? 
that's a different topic what environment is to be required how many people are there what resources to be required what features should be included into this release what features should be excluded and what tools should be used for automation right what is the entry criteria what is the exit criteria uh, what are the different kinds of environments that we want right basically there are so many other things all these goes as part of test plan functional testing types you should know right smoke sanity uh, uh system testing all those things right you should know there are so many things design techniques uh so there is something called as um uh, what is that uh, boundary value analysis right and then state transitions all these things um equivalence partitioning all these are test design techniques and test data how do you prepare a test data what happens when you don't give any data what happens when you give a invalid data what happens when you give data with special characters what happens when you give a valid data all these things right different combinations defect management right how do you raise a defect so just because i get a defect it's so is it okay for me to just uh, see developer there is a defect no you should know you should give exact steps to replicate the more experience you are go one step further down check out the root cause analysis for this defect for example inspect go to the network tab click on all there will be some uh, api request response the moment you click on submit button for a form there is some api call that is made at the back end and let's say that uh, it was a bad request let's say that you are not authorized to access that resource then they'll say you are not authorized you'll get 401 unauthorized access okay you can tell to the developer see only on ui i'm getting sorry message instead of telling you on ui i'm getting sorry message that you can't access this the moment i went to the you know next level of uh, debugging i got to know i am not authorized i mean this user is not authorized to access the service or this resource see i'm getting 401 unauthorized and then if there are some application logs like kibana you can say give the time stamp go to kibana replicate the scenario see what is the api calls what are the response that you get see uh, or is that kibana logs or any kind of applications logs that you're using in this timestamp i'm getting this can you see how much of uh, how, to what level you can go to provide a root cause analysis for the developer which makes developers lives easy okay friends uh, that is all about defect management test closure activities what are the artifacts what are the artifacts artifact is nothing but uh, the progress uh, the documents that you share with other stakeholders. See, testing team, whether uh, testing team is going the right direction or not, can they complete the activities on time? These are all the things that we have had, having. In this particular module, so many number of bugs are still open, so many number of bugs are resolved. Uh, so uh, as a testing team for this sprint, we uh, have raised so many bugs, all these things, right? Artifacts. So this is a must, friends. Without this, if you say, I know automation, Huh, no. <laughs> okay. So what is a rule of thumb? Finally, never push a user story as part of the increment until automation uh, test cases are written and passed for all the test cases of the user story. You have to automate all the test cases for a user story. I understand that not everything can be automated. Exceptions are those, right? For example, when you do something, you have to see whether somebody received an email or not whether that user received an email or not. It's very difficult, right? We don't know whether it takes, within a minute, the user can receive an email, within two minutes, or after half an hour, that user can receive an email, or maybe that person may not receive an email at all, which is like out of the system, right? So there are things which we cannot automate. Except for that, for those things that can be automated, it is a must for you to automate, and then only it meets the definition of done, and then only it goes as part of the release, right? So I hope I was clear in making you understand. Uh, I hope it was very clear uh, as to what is required, why it is required, and what kind of things or what kind of problems and all those things. So if you have any questions, please comment below and I'll be very happy to answer you. And uh, yeah, so put it in comments and see you in the next video. Bye.